Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Connolly. I've been making videos for my fifth grade students so they can learn while we have to spend this time at home. And then I decided that I was gonna make them public for all fifth graders in case anyone else wanted to learn. And now I'm thinking I'm going to be making videos for all grade levels, kindergarten through fifth grade, um, so everyone can keep learning at home during this crazy time. If you have any topics you want me to cover, my email is connollymathathome at gmail.com. Just pay attention here. My last name is spelled O-L-L-Y, not E-L-L-Y, just to make sure your email gets through, okay? Please like, share, and subscribe too so we can get as many kids learning as possible. Um, everyone deserves to learn during this crazy time. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the U.S. Standard Algorithm for Subtraction. I'm not going to be going over just the steps. I'm going to be going over what actually is happening. It's really important, parents and students, that you understand what's happening in the standard algorithm because you're going to encounter situations that you're going to have to make sense of in the standard algorithm, and you're going to need a deep understanding of what's going on. Parents, I know it's easy to teach a procedure and hope that they just get it, but there's so many different situations they actually have to think, what am I supposed to do in the standard algorithm? So I'm going to help you with that. Um, this is standard is really important in fourth grade because when you get to fifth grade, we use the standard algorithm when we are or when we're dividing. So when we're subtracting back in division, um, and it's really important that we get those correct so that we're dividing correctly. And um, so let's get started. So 371 minus 192 is what we're going to start with first. In order to help you understand, I'm going to show you what's happening with place value, and I'm going to be writing what we're doing in the expanded form over here. So 371 minus 192. Okay, I'm doing this over here so that you can see what's going on and remember forever what's happening because you have a solid understanding. So let's think about one minus two. So it's um, important to, sorry, let me start from the beginning. Important to remember your place values are lined up perfectly. Ones under ones, tens under ten, hundreds under hundreds, and it would always be like that. It has to be lined up by place value. Um, so back to the actual steps. So when we get to the standard algorithm, we start over here and the ones place and you ask yourself, can I subtract one minus two? So can I subtract one? So if I have one, can I take away two? And the answer is no, you cannot. Parents, just pay attention to this. Sometimes kids just wanna go two minus one because they can, uh, but that changes the value. Order matters in subtraction, so we can't do that. So one minus two is the direction we have to go. But if you find your student making a mistake, just look for that. Did they go two minus one? Because sometimes that happens. So we cannot do one minus two. So here's what has to happen. We have to regroup. And parents, it's called regrouping now, not borrowing. I'm gonna try my best not to make the mistake while I'm teaching, sometimes I do. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to regroup from the tens place. So I can't do one minus two. That means I'm going to regroup. I'm gonna take a group of 10 and I'm gonna add it to the ones place. So one plus 10 is 11. So I took that group of 10, I added it to the ones place. What does it look like over here? I'm gonna take away a group of 10 and I'm adding it over here to the ones place. So I used to have seven groups of 10, now I have six groups of 10, and I used to have one one, and now I have 11 ones, okay? So 60, plus 11 is still 71. I'm just regrouping so that I can subtract. So 11 minus two we're able to do now, and that's all good, okay? So after you do the ones place, you move right over to the tens place, and so we have 60 minus 90. Or we can think about it as six groups of 10 minus nine groups of 10. So if you have six, sorry, you cannot subtract nine, so we have to regroup again. So. When we're regrouping, you're only going to the place value right next door. So I'm in the tens place, which means I come over to the hundreds place. And what's actually happening is you are going to take away 10 groups of 10, which is the same as 100. So think about it, 10 groups of 10, same as 100. Okay, so I'm going to cross this off. I'm going to take away 
10 groups of 10, which is the same as 100. And I'm going to put that 100 over here. So now I have 160. What does it look like over here? I'm going to take away the 10 groups of 10. I used to have six groups of 10, but when I add the 10 groups of 10 over here, I have 16 groups of 10. That's why it looks like a 16 is appearing. Okay, so now we've regrouped. We can do 160 minus 90. Just kidding, that's not correct. Um, or we can do 16 minus 9. Okay, so make that look a little prettier for the bid. Um, now we go to the hundreds place. We've taken the ones place, the tens place. We go to the hundreds place. Two minus one, we're thinking 200 minus 100 is 100. So that is what's happening when we're doing the U.S. standard algorithm for subtraction. So you can see that the ten group, the, the group one group of ten moving over here. You can see the ten groups of ten moving over here. And that is why we are regrouping like that. So that's one situation where you're going to have to regroup. Another situation that gets really tricky is when we have zeros involved. So let's take a look at that. Zeros as digits in the number we're subtracting from. So let's think about 2,100 minus 300. 61. So I'm going to show you again with the expanded form. 2,100, nothing, no, did, nothing in the tens place of the ones place. It's represented by zero. And then we have 361. So we cannot do zero minus one. If you have zero, you cannot take away one. You can't take away anything. You have zero. So we have to regroup. Now, I just taught you that you are regrouping from the tens place in this situation. But when you look at the tens place, there's nothing there. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go over to the hundreds place. Okay, so let's watch what's happening. We can't do zero minus one. There's nothing to regroup from here. So we're going to go over to the hundreds place. I am going to regroup. I'm going to take 10 groups of 10, which is 100. And I'm going to bring all 10 groups of 10 over here. What just happened? I took the 10 groups of 10. I used to have zero groups of 10. Now I have 10 groups of 10. Okay, it stands for the number 100. That's what's going on over there. Now I'm able to regroup to the ones place. So I need a group of 10. So I'm going to take away one group of 10. 0 plus 10 is 10. Now I have what I need in the ones place. So he, what does it look like over here? I took away a group of 10. I gave it over here. Now we can subtract because we know we can do 10 minus 1 is 9. We know we can do nine groups of 10 minus six groups of 10, which is three groups of 10. So that's what's happened so far. And now we're in another situation because we have zero minus three, and we know we can't do that. So we have to go to the place value next door. We're gonna take 10 groups of 100, which is 1,000. So this becomes, this was 2,000. Now it becomes 1,000. And then we say those 10 groups of 100 go here. So 10 groups of 100 in the hundreds place, which is 1,000. So 10 groups of 100 is 1,000. Now we can subtract. 1,000 minus 300 is 700. 10 minus 3 over here is where you're going to see your 7. And that's what's actually going on. So. In this situation, when we had a zero in the ones place and we had to regroup, um, there was nothing in the tens place, we had to regroup to the hundreds place, but we went in order. And in the next example, I'm going to show you a couple things that students do that I do not want to see happening. Um, I mean, I, I'm not going to see your work, but please don't do it because it is incorrect. And um, it's just something that, this is why I think the standard algorithm is so important because when students do this, 
there is, you can tell that there's not this solid understanding of what's going on, and we want them to have a, a solid understanding so they're not making these types of mistakes. So let's say that we have 3,500 minus 498, just making up numbers. Here's what happens that cannot happen, okay? What happens is students say, I can't do zero minus eight, so I wanna regroup, but there's nothing there to regroup. So I'm just gonna go grab, grab some stuff over from over here. They cross out the five, they make it a four, they skip the um, tens place, and then they do, do this. So what that, what is happening if you do that is you're taking 10 groups of 10, which is 100, you're putting it over here and calling it just a regular 10. So now you've changed the value of the problem. So then they don't stop there because they need to regroup again. So they just cross this off and make it a three and do that. So that's seriously changing the value of the problem. That's not the point of regrouping across that I showed you before. Um, so we wanna make sure that students don't do that. So be careful if you see um, they've crossed off a couple things, they might have a long list up there. If there's a lot of zeros, that's something, that's the um, misunderstanding that's happening. All right, so that was just an example of what I don't wanna see, so I'm gonna give another situation. So let's say that we have, let's do the 3,500, but this time minus 290, because I just wanna go over another thing that gets going. Um, students see two zeros in a row, and they're like, yeah, let's regroup, and they start going, and they go, they do this. Every the regrouping's all right, and then they say 10 minus zero. And they didn't actually need to regroup, so we need to go through each step and think about exactly what's going on. So let's say that we have 3,060 minus 1,054. Okay, I just wanna give us a couple different situations. So I'm gonna show us an expanded form, what's going on, 3,060 and 1,054. The point of this one is I want to show that students don't need to go crazy with the regrouping. You need to make sense of what's going on. So you ask yourself, can I do zero minus four? And we cannot. So what happens is we are going to regroup in the tens place. As you know, we're going to cross off the 60. We're going to take away one group of 10. So we used to have six groups of 10 but we gave a group of 10 to the ones place, and now we have five groups of 10. So now we can subtract 10 minus four is six. Five minus five, or 50 minus 50 is zero. Can we do zero minus zero? Yes. Please do not think that every time that there's a zero that you have to um, subtract, or I mean, so that you have to regroup, you do not. And three minus one is two. And 3,000 minus, this is 2,000. So, I just wanted to point out that not every situation is gonna make you regroup 100 times. You really have to think about exactly what's going on. All right, so that is the US standard algorithm for subtraction. I hope it was helpful um, in understanding what's going on every time you use the US standard algorithm for subtraction. There's several more situations that could happen. Um, where the zeros are in different digits, you have to regroup, then regroup, then regroup, or maybe you don't have to regroup. So what I want you thinking about is how much of um, you're moving to the next place value. Are you moving a group of 10 over? Are you taking 10 groups of 10? You really have to make sense of what's going on. If you have any questions, you can email me. If you have an a, um, equation you want me to go over, just let me know. I hope this was helpful. Please share with your friends if you want to get them learning. Thanks. Bye.